gentlemen, I hope you brought some coffee. This is gonna be a long one. Worthy of a man wearing a wolf head on the beach. Worthy of uh, a, a bald eagle with man biceps, like Conan the Barbarian. Worthy of a little girl with her horsey hoisting a sword. Worthy of mother fucking Freddie Mercury on Darth Vader's shoulders. This is the AMD Ryzen 1700 review. <laughs> and it's gonna be a long one. I decided to make a full on, full out review. I've been spending the last couple days really sinking my teeth into the system. It is now complete and I'm very happy with it. It's only missing a very high end graphics card, which will be coming soon. So let's get into it. We're gonna hoist our coffees and uh, cue an intro and I hope that all this weird stuff I've been saying hasn't thrown you off because it's gonna be pretty informative. Thank you very much. Uh, talk to you after this intro. Uh, AMD Ryzen, oh my goodness. Very, very impressed with this system. Like, uh, it's the most fun I've had uh, making a PC in a very, very long time. Quick background, I've been making PCs, I've been meddling with, you know, PCs since my first 386, like back in the 90s, early 90s. Uh, and uh, at one point I switched my mother's uh, AMD uh, K6, for 600 megahertz with my 300 megahertz uh, inside the cases uh, when she got a new computer so that I had the more powerful computer without her knowing. Uh, so I've been doing this for a long time, guys, and I've, you know, had a lot of fun over the years since, you know, for, for early days of overclocking uh, an Athlon, like, to one gigahertz, you know, uh, I've been into it. This really, oh my god, it's, it's like a whole other world, obviously. Uh, just to put this into perspective, uh, my 3770, four cores, eight threads, uh, Cinebench did around 660, it's up on the screen here, where, uh, of course, with the Ryzen, uh, not quite tripling it, but since I'm in the neighborhood of it, in fact, I'll let you in on a little secret, I overclocked uh, this baby and got a 1700 uh, Cinebench score last night to fit right in line with the 1700 moniker on its name it was it was it's really cool because <laughs> that's that's a uh, 1800x performance like you can get maybe 50 more out of an 1800x on cinebench if you overclock uh but we'll get to all of that because there's there's a lot to talk about so in this build i've been having a lot of fun and we're doing it with a budget focus okay i kept a really terrible case that i've been having to you know it is an enthusiast case, but it's from a long time ago. I kept that in order to, you know, keep the price down. I went with the B550 uh, uh, series chipset in order to save some money, but I'm glad I did because I'm going to prove that you don't need those ROG or, or really expensive uh, chipset, the X370 or whatever, in order to really get some performance out of the machine. Yeah, you know, it does offer some more functionality, which we'll, we will get into, into uh, voltage and stuff like that but it didn't actually hinder me from getting the end result uh, and no one's really putting reviews of this board on there so that's pretty cool and then I'm the only one as far as I can tell water cooling with the H60 so that's pretty cool gotta say that Wraith cooler oh my good it's pretty damn awesome you don't need a water cooler or any other cooler but that one to get some solid overclocking performance out of this chip uh, because it's only like in that top 10% extra you want where cooling really comes into play which is you know bravo to AMD at this point but uh, brief lesson this you know this comes out and the way they did it is Intel usually uh, they make a, a really high-end CPU like uh, the 7700 or whatever 40 uh, 750 or whatever and in the manufacturing process some cores come out amazing and they test them and they overclock and they do well they put a K skew on it some don't do so well or meet certain you know whatever and they call this binning 
you know, you know this if you're uh, an enthusiast, but they don't do so well, so they take the K off of it, lock the multiplier, and now you have a little bit cheaper version that doesn't overclock and a little bit cheaper uh, or more expensive a version that does overclock. And what AMD did was they went, we're gonna fit, you know, three categories here. We're gonna make the same chip, and when, you know, it doesn't quite perform to standard, we'll make it the 1700X. And when it doesn't quite perform, you know, get, get a little bit better memory, you know, or, or overclocking, we'll make it just the 1700, and that's the way it's gonna work. So I get the 1700, and there are some limiting factors. I could see why my chip wasn't an 1800X, okay? But it hasn't stopped me from getting really decent performance this close to what the 1800X can get. Uh, basically, it seems like my chip was memory. I can't get over uh, 40, uh, 2400 uh, megahertz on my memory, even though I have the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit they shipped with the review units that's supposed to be, um, you know, completely compatible with this motherboard. Now, future BIOS updates, I'm running the latest as of March 25th, so yesterday, and it says, you know, updated memory, it, it didn't help. Uh, I was only able to get 2400, and uh, with this motherboard here, I, I had, uh, th there's limited things on what you can do with the voltage. Uh, but that still didn't hinder me really once I got into it. Plus, what's cool is my motherboard has a full suite, the uh, Asus AI suite of, um, uh, it's hard to get running on your Windows 10 PC, but you can actually overclock right from their AI suite. And then Ryzen has their own, uh, you know, Ryzen, whatever, underground, what is it, Ryzen? Uh, Ryzen Master, uh, that you can do the same thing. You can overclock in Windows, which is something, that's a daft concept to me. I knew, like, I'm from the time where you overclocked in the BIOS and the BIOS looked like DOS. So uh, I was actually to get able to get the most out of my chip by overclocking it in Windows just a little bit more. And that's where I got the 1700 score was I altered the voltage and you know brought up uh, things just a little bit more. And it actually ran a Cinebench and a st stability test for over 30 minutes like that. Now I'm not gonna run my computer at full tilt because as you know, once you overclock a Ryzen chip, you no longer have the turbo boosting technologies and stuff like that enabled. You're running full gigahertz all the time, and because this my computer stays on, you know, a lot, and you know, even though it's got the uh, water cooler on it, I'd rather have it just a little bit underclocked and have 99% of the, the the horsepower than keep it uh, super clocked all the time and risk something happening eventually or whatever, something wearing out. But I, I will revisit the overclocking and all this, but we'll, and we will get into all of my specifics here. But starting off, what I did was I put the Wraith cooler on. I have several fans in my case. I have two uh, blowing in through the hard drives. I have a pretty good power supply now. Uh, as you see, it's an OCZ uh, 550 watt. I'm not going to run any dual graphics card or anything, so that should be perfect. And uh, so it's got an exhaust vent on it, and then I have a big 140 mil fan in my the window of uh, my case, and then I had another 120 venting out the back, and uh, I just left it open uh, because I took that terrible like 200 millimeter fan out of my case because uh, I was going to make way for water cooling that's actually where I put my radiator and uh, I, I did all the testing kind of you know best case you know scenario uh, with lots of fans and stuff like that with the Wraith cooler and was able to achieve uh, 3.7 gigahertz no no problem uh, Ryzen does not run very hot at all actually uh, until like I say you get to that last 10% of overclocking and that's where I saw my thermals go up. But what I think the uh, the overclocking potential in my uh, CPU is limited not by thermals, I don't think. It's by, I think, the memory. The memory problem the, where I can only go 2400 megahertz. If I could bring that up one more notch, I could probably get to 3.9 gigahertz uh, a lot easier or, or 4 gigahertz. But that's got to be my, my problem because the water cooler works very well and of course as you know water coolers really cool you know for the first like five or ten minutes very 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 well so you know if i can achieve some really high 
overclocked it would be in that first five minutes and I was not able to do so so generally w what is my feeling on this uh, you know with a solid-state drive I don't have an M.2 solid-state drive I'm just running a Samsung Evo Windows can only feel so fast you know it's, it's running off of a really fast hard drive and you know day-to-day -day use th this compared to the Co core 2 duo system I did in the last video it's hard to tell the difference you know in just web browsing and stuff uh, especially when now that the you know I use the graphics card in both computers the GTX 770 but uh, when it comes to you know running a Cinnabon score and seeing 1700 or 1650 or running a game in it loading like that uh, I'll show some game benchmarks here in a second it's like it's a lot of fun and then the biggest difference I've seen is even compared to my Core i7 3770 video editing is like a complete treat um, of course like it's like night and day also like you can just load up any time frame you know and I'm not running like 4k or anything like that so it's not like uh, before it was that bad but I can run all my effects live in the editing suite and not hiccup one single bit I can you know add a bunch of layers I can color grade nothing it's like a complete sweet dream uh, and I have no issues there so that makes it so now I have more headroom to try you know better edits get more editing done in a shorter period of time it just makes me a happier person because in the long run you got to do more with this this particular system especially if you, you're looking to invest into it because it's not the gaming workhorse everyone wants or you know if you're an AMD fanboy it's not competing with you know even the few 7600 7600 uh, KB Lake because you can overclock that to eight gigahertz still kind of matters and you're only you're maxing out of four on this system you know things have come a long way and we're actually going to do another video a little later on where i compare uh that old amd system i was looking at from 10 years ago with, with how far it's come with you know this and just kind of a, a, a funny little treat video we're also going to have a complete review of this water cooler because i've used it twice now and i have a lot of nice things to say about it and maybe some things that could be improved upon also going to do a full review of the motherboard just like a, a five minute video explaining my experience with it because i think it's going to be a, a budget option especially once ryzen 5 comes out so uh let's go ahead and just crack some benchmarks here then we'll come back and we'll kind of sum things up and uh i'll give you a little bit more of my overclocking uh story so here you go break the coffee break yeah so all oh, benchmarking numbers i mean they are what they are i'm no uh jay's two cents paul's hardware linus tech tips and have tested all of the kb lake to ivy bridge skews to show you the differences and i don't have an amazing video card yet uh you know i could get an rx 480 and then i'm just reviewing something everyone else has i could wait and uh there's gonna be awfully cool stuff on the horizon um, so we're, we're gonna wait, uh, but that gives you an idea of the CPU stuff and how, you know, future proof this thing is. I'm gonna be able to get five years out of this easy, unless Intel brings out Intel Mountain Sky Lake, you know, super wormhole and it runs 10 gigahertz or some stupid BS, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that'll happen in the next couple of years, but, uh, th this should get me some serious traction. It's as good as a thousand dollar you know, CPU alone from Intel, as far as I'm concerned, or this close to it, 
especially for work you know workflow environments and a little bit of gaming you know you're not buying this if you're an enthusiast and the i or the ryzen 5 and 3 are going to be your sweet spots for gaming and maybe they're not going to be as good as some of the intel offerings but you know you're going to save a couple of bucks and the bang for a buck is going to be good so my overclocking experience on this was awesome um i just played with the multiplier in the BIOS in the, AI, in the Asus Tweaker, I can see that some of the, you know, you can see here that what the BIOS looks like, it looks a little different than the ROG Asus, you know, that I've seen in other videos because I bought the lower motherboard, but all I'm missing, you know, in regards to overclocking is a direct manual control for my voltage. There's an offset that took me a while to get used to. And it seems like my voltage actually runs pretty low stock on this uh, on this CPU. So I don't know if it's the motherboard or the CPU specifically, but I had to change that offset to get it anywhere away from 1.25 volts, which was um, you know pretty low. I think it'll go up to 1.4. AMD says uh, on these Ryzen CPUs. Uh, I kept it at just over 1.3. Uh, by changing that offset function and uh, it's worked out perfectly. I am now running at 3.8 gigahertz, super solid as a rock. Temperatures never go above like 55 Celsius at ID64 running for 40 minutes. So, you know, bang on to that. And I was able to hit 3.9 uh, with some pretty high temperatures, stable and get that 1700 Cinebench score. Uh, but I, I don't like riding on the edge. I'd rather peel it just a little bit back and then, you know, know that my system's going to be solid and safe if I, you know, leave it on doing something intense for, you know, an hour and, you know, leave the house and then come back and realize that it's melted on the floor or whatever. <laughs> Uh, but I'm watching Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to try and put more computer stuff up on those social medias if you want to check those out. If you have any questions about my experience or anything you've seen in this video, I answer all my YouTube comments or you can uh, send me a message on social medias. I will stop taking up all your time, but there is tons more Ryzen content uh, you know, coming up and a bunch of old computer, old hardware retrospectives, so that's always fun. There uh, I have a lot planned. I pre-ordered my LG G6, so there'll be a review of that and a full, you know, work up on the camera on it and stuff like that. So I am actually very, very looking forward to the near future. And you guys have a good day. My name is Timmy Joe, and uh, keep it sleazy. Bye.